right, what's going on everybody? Zombies here again, and today we're back with another Marble Snap video. So in this one, we are back for another Infinite Decks of the Week. Got some really sweet decks here to showcase from the community that they have used to hit Infinite. Always love doing this. Uh, it's great to see the different kinds of decks people are able to have success with, and really shows you that hitting Infinite is possible with a lot more than just the standard meta stuff. Uh, this week, we do have some cards we're probably going to be focusing on a bit more, the newly released Iron Lad, as well as some cards that got a bit of love via the OTA update, namely Venom and Orca, who definitely are more appealing now than they used to be. Before we get on into it, do want to mention we have a companion article going over the decks, and if you want to grab any of the deck lists really easily, this is a great way to do it, so check that out, link in the video description as always. All right, so starting us off here, we have two decks from Ray Cordeen. First up is a Lockdown deck. Really been loving the Lockdown archetype, so great to see it having more success with other people this season. Uh, definitely a really solid choice, even in a post-Jeff world. And then they said they used that in the 90s, but then were struggling a bit, so decided to switch it up. And uh, they went with a Venom Silver Surfer deck. So this is a really cool idea. Credit going to the Jolly Roger, uh, who originally came up with this list. Uh, so basically, you're a Sarah Surfer deck. However, you have the good destroy cards like Venom and Deathlock. Venom is better with Surfer now because he is that base three power, which is kind of nice. Uh, you have a few cards that really appreciate getting destroyed, like Bucky and Wolverine and Nova. And then we have Nimrod as another way to get a lot of power on the board on the final turn. Uh, with or without Sarah, this card is really good. You play Nimrod on five, and then you can play uh, two destroy cards on the final turn. So you blow up the Nimrod, you get to go in another lane, you blow it up again. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, it's been really neat seeing uh, the resurgence of Nimrod, who didn't really get his time in the sun during the time he was a season pass card himself. So really neat to see more experimentation and success with this card due to the recent buff Venom got. Next up here, we have a deck from Brophian. So this is kind of what a lot of people were expecting Iron Lad to slot into. And uh, to no real surprise, Iron Lad is pretty good here. So this is the Stature Black Bolt Darkhawk deck. Deck been seeing a lot of success recently before the launch of Iron Lad. And Lad just feels like a really easy include here as we have a lot of good targets to hit like Darkhawk, Black Bolt. Uh, even hitting our tech card like Enchantress isn't always a bad thing. There are just a lot of good things for this to hit. It's really amusing when you hit a Jeff with the Iron Lad and you can move him around. Uh, definitely a card that is really nice in this archetype, but I don't think you need Iron Lad for this deck to be successful. But Brophy in here showing us that he can be a worthy include if you do have him as an option. Next up here, we have a really cool Orca Dino deck. So Orca is one of my favorite cards that they buffed, was really, really bad before, but now uh, there is actually some merit to using this card because a 616 is nothing to scoff at. And we have a really cool combo here with Invisible Woman. So the combo is you play your Taskmaster behind the Invisible Woman, and then you play your big thing, preferably Orca, on the final turn and Taskmaster will copy at the end of the game whatever the last big thing you played was. So very creative idea here, I like it a lot. Seems to make sense in the Dino Shell we have here as Taskmaster, also not a bad thing to copy your Dino or maybe your She-Hulk. Uh, you have the option of locking people into a wave turn as well. A lot of cards to keep the hand size nice and big for the Dino. Just seems like a very solid deck overall and a cool original take on a Devil Dino with one of the new buffed cards. Another cool Orca deck that made it to Infinite is from Ben here, and this is much more of an ongoing focus list. Uh, really cool idea here. Uh, we have a lot of prime targets for the Lad. Uh, not even that bad if you end up hitting the Orca, as long as the Lad is on his own. Uh, but we just have pretty much the vast majority of the good ongoing cards. We have Onslaught to double up on them, uh, Daredevil to make that Professor X a bit better, uh, Lad is just really good with a critical mass of powerful effects, and this deck seems to have that. Super Scroll, pretty nice meta tech here as there are a lot of ongoing stuff going around, so being able to just kind of get that value from the stuff your opponent's playing can be pretty sweet, especially if you get an Iron Lad into Super Scroll and you decide to double up on it or get even crazier if you slam down an Onslaught. 
Uh, but definitely an interesting direction to go and one I will have to take for a spin as this looks like a ton of fun. Then we have a bit of an old school take on a Devil Dino build. This one coming from Alessandro. And uh, this is the X Dino that we used to see a lot of, uh, leaning a bit more into that lane control element. So we have Spider-Man and Professor X to help close out the game. Uh, we lock down a lane on five, then play a big thing in whatever lane we want on turn six. Hopefully that's enough to win the game, or we try and swing them with some powerful tech cards like our Shang-Chi and our Killmonger, or even Cosmo. A lot of people are not playing around Cosmo currently. Uh, America Chavez for a bit more consistency. Quinjet so you can play your generated cards. Just seems like a fairly standard solid dino list, except going with that lane control package, which I think is one of the stronger things to be doing in Snap right now. Next up is a deck that really warms my heart to see someone have success with again, and that is Brad Cole with his Cerebro 2 Hazmat deck. So this is another deck that was made possible by the recent OTA changes with the buff to Luke Cage, now making him Probably a staple in the Cerebro 2 archetype. I love Cerebro. Cerebro's always been a favorite of mine, but it has not fared too well in the past few months due to Red Skull and Thanos Stones and even just bad locations messing you up. Uh, but this is one of the decks that I used to hit infinite very early on in the second season, and it really is great to see it coming back again. A lot of ways to get extra bodies onto the board with your Mr. Sinister and Brood, Storm and Goose with some lane lockdown, and then obviously your Blue Marvel, Mystique and Cerebro to buff up all your guys to a lot stronger than just two power. Then we have Zad Hots getting in with a deck that I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about, and that is the uh, Magic She-Hulk Infinite deck. So the idea with this one is you're trying to take an extra turn with Magic, skip that turn and then we are able to play one or more with moon girl she hulks into the infinite which is a whole lot of power this is a deck that used to be kind of popular for day one infinites uh, but was pretty vulnerable to unnerfed arrow uh, but it seems now that uh, she is gone and now that a lot of the other powerful things have been toned down a notch this deck is kind of having a bit of a resurgence a uh, really cool deck uh, works even if you don't get the magic as you can is it double up on your she hulks into a explosive final turn that way you have some nice early game interaction and things like iceman and korg so you don't necessarily have to just rely on this plan uh, but it is definitely the main focus of what you're trying to do here and we have a lot of protection as well as obviously we are very vulnerable to shang chi so we have our things like armor and cosmo making sure our stuff stays where we play it and doesn't get blown up Chavez because we need the bit of extra consistency but if you like playing a whole lot of power on the final turn of the game this might be the deck for you definitely a lot of fun and pretty underrated then we have an old reliable here coming in with ml moss man and that is the death wave slash doom wave archetype uh, kind of a amalgamation of the two decks uh, ever since the doom wave star game were popular We've seen some people including the destroy stuff, some people taking Doom Wave its own direction, and uh, definitely seems that the regular death focused version with just Doom at the top end seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, Enchantress, even after getting rechanged down to a 4 5, still looks to be taking the place of Shang-Chi in this deck. Uh, just because there are so many ongoing things in the meta, it seems like she's hitting more stuff than the Shang is, which is interesting to see. Also cool to see Arrow still making an appearance in this build, as some of the builds have moved on from her. But always like seeing some success with Death Wave, and it's great to see that the deck is still infinite viable after all this time. If you're not as into the death and destroy element of wave decks, you can definitely still do well with a normal doom wave version, which we can see here from Tyler Tatum. And uh, yeah, pretty standard deck. He went with a bit more of a lane control focus. So having things like your storm and your goose to make it kind of awkward for the opponent. Goose can be especially powerful with wave as unless they have a cheap card that gets reduced like Stature, She-Hulk, or Miles, they're not going to be able to play into the Goose lane on the final turn, which can benefit our Nebula, as does Storm. Really solid deck overall. Cool to see Jessica Jones seeing a bit of play again. I've been liking her a lot recently as well in these style of lists. So if you like the Doom Wave stuff, this is definitely one I would check out. Then we have Sebastian Dubs coming in with a really cool Zabu Control build. Uh, I was really happy to see this one as he was using Stegron, and that is a card that has not gotten a lot of love since it came out. 
I really like the card, but it hasn't been very popular, so really cool to see it have some success in this deck and act as another enabler here for Miles, potentially. Uh, definitely leaning on the lane control stuff, so we see the full suite of Storm, Spider-Man, Professor X. And if you like lane control, these three cards should be in your deck, because they really do give you quite a fighting chance against even some of the most popular and powerful decks in the game, like the Miles Stature deck that is going around everywhere. Other than that, we just have some powerful interaction tools such as Shang-Chi and Enchantress. Jeff is really helpful in these style of decks, as you can't be sure Professor X is going to be enough on his own anymore, so having Jeff there as a hedge is really nice. Nebula, obviously really good synergy, and just a few other cards that either synergize well with the lane lockdown like Lizard, or help enable our Miles like our Polaris. Next up, we have a really sweet Patriot Iron Lad build that is becoming really popular over the last few days. This one comes from Brandon APG, who ended up placing first in a 100 person single elimination snap tournament. So that's super impressive in its own right, but even cooler to see him do it with a cool new card that is kind of transforming the Patriot archetype a bit. Obviously, Mr. Sinister and Brood have very powerful synergy with the lad, as do other powerful ongoing effects we have here, like our Patriot, our Iron Man, allows you to run a bit greedier style of Patriot than we've seen recently. So this was really cool. Seen some people post Infinite with this deck as well, and figured it definitely deserved a shout out as it is quickly becoming the most popular Iron Lad deck that I've been seeing on the ladder. And it's just a ton of fun to have a, uh, a bit heavier on the top end style of Patriot. And last but not least, we're rounding it out with a little bit of spice. This one coming from Kevin Dierks. And uh, this one is hella fun, as uh, the deck name says. I love hella decks. It makes me happy when I see people succeed with them because it is a challenging thing to do your climb with a hella deck. He used hella from 76 to 95 and then closed it out with the Iron Patriot list that we just showed in the last deck. A uh, really solid deck. Uh, Hella, definitely not one I would necessarily recommend for your climb, but hey, he's proving it can be done if you have the willpower and RNG. Super fun to see, and if you're a Hella fan, maybe this is the deck that you have been waiting for. And that's going to wrap it up for Infinite Decks of the Week. Saw a bunch of really cool decks here, so a lot of options if you're looking for something to help finish up your climb. As always, the decks will be linked in the article in the video description, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like, comment, and subscribe here at Marvel Snap Zone for all your Marvel Snap related content. And if you enjoy the stuff I do, check out my links in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.